don't miss any content don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell hey guys welcome back to sahara football as usual i am your host Salas if you are so we all know on Friday, I brought you the breaking news. Coach Chris Yapia and the other national team coaches, the technical team that is, have been sacked or have, have been terminated and dissolved by the Ghana Football Association. And many people were wondering, was it, was it the case of the coach's contract expiring? Coach Chris Yapia, that is, his contract expiring and all that. Is that the reason why the GFA decided to sack him? Well, Keto Kureku on Saturday granted an interview on Joy 99.7 FM. He sought to address all these issues and talked about why we have still not had a Ghana football, the league that has already begun in March day two currently, why it has not been yet televised. So to explain why that was the case and also warned betting companies who had been using the Ghana Football Association or the GFA Ghana Premier League games on their platforms to desist from that. He also talked about the TV right bids were still coming in seven companies bid for it we have a listen to that full interview that he granted on joy 99.7 fm if you're new to the channel I advise you to subscribe to the channel and to click on the notification bell to get more updates let's go have a listen to the interview the gfa president ket es okreku granted on saturday the, the yeah. full association is very much committed into um giving access to everybody in this country and beyond to consume our, our game because clearly if we want our league to be the best in the country it must have the best of media attention and media coverage and in arriving at that position it's very important for us to be very clear in our mind which direction we want to go the kind of media networks we want to work with and and most importantly how we want to arrive at that destination the last two weeks has been very challenging making sure that we do due diligence on all companies who have expressed interest, um, looking at capacity, looking at, at uh, financial capabilities, etc., etc. I'm very positive that for the third week of our games, some of the games will be on TV. Yeah, yeah. We're not only talking about uh, the Premier League. We also want to ensure that the Women's League gets the needed visibility. We want to ensure that the Division 1 League gets the needed visibility. We want to ensure that our national course festivals and championships gets the needed visibility. So we are right on track. Hard we we, took, uh, we took over on the 25th of October, uh -huh. uh, at the time that the league had been in abeyance for 18 months, uh -huh. at the time that apathy levels were really, really low, um, at the time that um, the league had no partners. And our first responsibility has been to revive the various products that we have okay um thankfully the premier league is underway the division one league should be underway next week the the women's league will then follow suit and then the regional leagues now beyond that we want to work at reposition of the product offering okay in in ensuring that we change the mindset of the people not only the direct consumers of of, of the of the product but also corporate ghana uh, now side by side with what i've been talking about we have established the marketing department who are very much uh, aggressively pursuing corporate ghana for, for partnerships we've also already engaged the previous partners that we, we 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 had to see the possibility of we reviving the relationships so i'm very positive about the future um it's just a matter of time once the narratives are beginning to change corporate ghana will turn and look that people are so passionate about the game people love uh, football so much and people are very much concerned about how the game will be improved and mm. so our members of the council of the football association we are all very much concerned about about the sport the people of this country have voted for us to ensure that we change the game uh, we we have promised that we want to take the game to a different level and 71 days uh, into office i think that the signals are quite clear uh, about our intentions and the direction at which we want to take the sport. Um, we announced the a change in direction um, for all our national teams, technical wise. Um, unfortunately, people are speaking about only one, one of our national teams, the Black Stars. For me, the most important national team is not really the Black Stars. It's the U17, the U20, the U23, the Chan and the black stars they are very important to us so um 
we have changed the direction. I think we used to be in gear one. We need to move to another gear. And that's what people are waiting for. Big announcement happened, was it 48 hours ago? Oh. Yes, I'm sure in the new week we'll have a clear direction. Um, uh, it's always decisions of the council. The council will meet, the council will discuss all issues affecting all our national teams, male, female, across board. And we will take decisions that will help the, the fourth match of our game. Yeah, 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 sure. And it's not only the Black Stars, the U17 have assignments that you 20 have assignments female and male so we are very much aware not let's 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 applaud our, our clubs for the big roles they are playing i mean if you scan through the media landscape every premier league club is now social media active every premier league club and this is amazing okay collectively we've made a big statement and that tells you the the amount of work the comms department and the competition department of the fa are putting into, into this the various seminars the various engagements that they having with the clubs is having a multiply effect on the entire football industry and, and i think the benefits are there for everybody to enjoy from people are always asking questions um, let me repeat what i have said here the council of the fa has not met no decisions have been taken decisions will be taken in the next few days uh, about the tanker directions of all our national teams, male and female. During the campaign, yeah. we knew that the volume of work mm. ahead of us was indeed, indeed enormous. Yeah. Um, but beyond October 25, I have been amazed at the quantum of work. Mm. Okay. Um, for which reason, I love to do the assessment on daily basis what we're doing on daily basis um, and i've always said that if you want to build the highest high riser in the city you need to get the foundation right if you don't get the foundation right that high riser will crash down okay and we are what we're going through now is to ensure that the foundations or the foundation of our sport is, is very right the foundation of our football association is right now what i have been preaching is an efficient secretariat and when i speak about an efficient secretariat i'm not talking about the staff of the fa who are uh, who are sitting at the headquarters mm. i'm also talking about our staff at the tenka center in prom prom i'm also talking about our staff at the regional level um football can never ever develop if we don't have efficient regional rfas and this has been the focus um the fa's needs quality staff which we have extensively uh, discussed they need resources they need capacity building etc uh, etc et so there's a lot of work to be done uh, fortunately we are all in line um, for the first time we shall be having all our rfas starting via leaks around the same time and for me it gladdens my heart a lot there's always a need for a unified football calendar in this country and that's what we are working up to so it's work in progress clearly i know that people are so passionate passionate people are looking forward to all the problems of the football association being solved one day after the 25th of october but of course that is not possible what is possible is that we believe in the way we believe in our way of doing the business we know exactly where we want to take the, 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 the spot and we're looking for the right personnel, the right people to take us to the promised land. Uh, you want to talk about the, about our senior national team. Mm. You're not only talking about the FA, but you also talk about corporate Ghana or let's say corporate world. Mm. And you also talk about the interest of government. Okay, so all considerations will be considered. After the first round of count, we had amassed 44. Oh. I was shocked. Shocked at what exactly? The margin? I was shocked or, mm. that we only amassed 44. Okay. And that it was not a one round victory. So, if you realize that I was overly quiet and calm, that was the reason. Then, immediately I said to my chief of staff, Michael, move. And he fully understands what I meant by that. It's a campaign term. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can it be explained? No, no, no. 
we, we, we will still have maybe when you are retired, we, we will still have an election to go <laughs> one day. Okay, so so I was calm, but beyond that, we 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 had been very prayerful, and we believe that once there is an Almighty God which we believe in, victory would definitely be ours. We don't believe in any other God. There are people who consulted different gods which we know we believe in the almighty god we prayed we had people who dedicated their lives into praying for us and i said to people who are so much close to me that if there is a god that i serve there's no way the game changing team will not win this election no way following which i stood in church and i praised the almighty i see and and so long as we've been voted into office for the next four years there's no way football will not change in ghana there's no way and already the writing is on the wall there's no way unless there's no god i have no knowledge of uh, mr nyantichi being involved in, in the campaign of course he's too clever to be involved okay because he knows that he can't be involved um it is important we give credit to the campaign team game changing campaign team led by Jones Alas and Boo. And that I think it's very important for us to let go of the happenings before the elections. Elections are over. We are seventy one days into delivering a mandate, a legitimate mandate. The entire sporting populace are very, very hopeful. Reactions have been overly positive. The goodwill has been amazing and it's my clear intention to deliver on promise okay um, clubs are beginning to see we have new competition specific regulations for the premier league for the division one league we have new management committees in place uh, we've given footballs to our clubs we'll continue to give all the goodies that we have promised our clubs we're working on both the public and the private sector for for partnerships by way of sponsorships we we also dealing with government to also support same because of the special nature of of of, of circumstances that led us into uh, normalization and and beyond um, so we are very much positive about the happenings in the in the in the new era of our, of our game it's so so important that we now focus on delivering our mandate our mandate is to ensure that cold football is revived juvenile football is revived women's football gets the needed attention they deserve facilities uh, logistics are available to clubs quality of officiating improves um, quality of coaching improves security needs at the various centers are well taken care of um, we produce good intangible assets in players we are very very competitive on all fronts uh, i.e u17 male female up to the senior national team levels um, we clean the atmosphere around the products we we offer the people of this country and i think that's most important for us on the table yeah well thank you i think that um um that is clearly the 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 thoughts of of the council and um we've already taken steps we've already started taking steps and and again, I'm sure that in four years, we'll look back and say that they delivered. Um, it's important that we all realize that it is, in, it is in our collective interest to ensure that the product called football is clean and is juicy for everybody to consume. We have not been, we have not been as competitive as we would love to be at all levels of our national teams. Okay. Be it at U17, U20 u23 mm. um the local national team and the black stars uh, same is applicable to the women's uh, teams okay. okay and and we need to find ways of being very, very competitive we need to find ways to bring the love back we need to find ways to make the performances of our teams not um uh, not stable but uh, in a very very stable way we need to produce quality national teams and ensure that we not only compete but also appear at the grand finales and win trophies okay and i think that that's the desire of the of the council uh, and 
whoever gets the opportunity now to work for for any of our national teams must feel proud of having the opportunity i'm saying that yes at the moment we don't have the needed resources to fund our leagues but we are very much positive because of the engagements that are currently ongoing and we are very positive that given the signals that we we have soon the fa will be in a position to 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 announce new partners i believe that ghana is one of the biggest football nations ghana has quality across board coaches um players personnel across board for which reason i believe that ghana must appear at every co co competition be it u17 level u14 u13 u12 u9 if it's available and also at the biggest mundial okay i when we do not appear i'm overly worried and i believe that we have to be at every tournament that is one bit of it the other bit is that we have to be competitive to be able to win uh, we used to be very dominant at the u17 level we used to appear at every u20 world cup um quite regularly um u23 we have always struggled uh, perhaps perhaps for for reasons that i i do not really know um but in the next four years i want us to win trophies and that will be the challenge to all the head trainers that will be engaging in the next few days not weeks okay um i want us to win the u17 world cup again i want us to win the u20 world cup i want us to go beyond south africa 2010 this this is this is my desire and i believe that anybody who from henceforth will be appointed to head any of our tanker teams must believe in this way and must be committed at delivering this promise i think that throughout the the campaign i placed a lot of premium on on juvenile slash coast football and i've clearly ruled out the intentions of this administration on how or where we want to take uh, juvenile football and to make that statement even louder we formed the national juvenile committee chaired by good by my good self okay we had our maiden meeting yesterday in the next few days we will roll out our clear policy directions for for juvenile football we are we are never in doubt about the importance of juvenile or coast football in this country and i have said that i played coast football i owned a coast club when i was 17. i know the quality of players that have been produced from the colts um, uh, sector of our industry so colts football is so dear to our hearts and i know that everybody who is involved in coast football is very expectant and these expectations we will meet Th this is a promise we have already made public made it public that seven um, companies expressed interest in 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 being a partner of the fa or, or in owning the rights to our leagues i'm sad to say uh yeah, men, sir, that super sports did not put in a bid okay i think this is the first time i have made this public super sports did not put in a bid in the new week we would announce the winners of of the bidding process um, we're looking at capacity we're looking at the 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 quantum of money that is available uh to the football association via this partnership we're looking at um how many cameras in capacity in terms of um capacity across board i.e cameras reach etc etc okay we we don't want a situation where um some league venues are never visited by our tv rights holder okay as we experienced in the time past we also want to ensure that the product is available to almost everybody in this country um we want to ensure that uh, we have uh, as many live games as possible plus uh, uh, highlights also being available so we we know everybody's expectant uh, we are working around the clock unfortunately for us there are some non-ghanian based companies who are interested
as in, well. the, in their rights. Mm. So w it's always important for us to go through a very good due diligence process to ensure that we are very sure about what we eventually roll out. Sure. Not we, there's one cancer that we, we, we are fighting and I want to make it public here. Mm. Um, as to speak, no betting company has been licensed by the Football Association to run uh, betting on our leagues. I see. Now, in the next few days, we shall start going to court. We've already made our tensions clear. Uh, we have advised, we have tried to engage. People are just not listening, okay? The next step is to go to court. Again, I'm saying here that no betting company has been licensed by the Football Association to take bids on our games. Thank you.